Hey everybody, this is John with Trails Off-Road. Today we're out here in Montrose about to go hit the Rim Rocker Trail. This is a about 160 mile overland route from Montrose, Colorado to Moab, Utah. We're gonna be riding along with my buddy Tim Palmer who maps up in Northern Colorado and his buddy Corey who's based out of Steamboat. We plan on spending two days on this trail. We are gonna start this morning and get as much mapping as we can done today. And we're gonna camp halfway along the way. And tomorrow night, we should be arriving in Moab. So it should be an awesome overland trip. A lot of good scenery, some water crossings, hopefully some technical obstacles, and just good time with good people out there. So we are almost at the trailhead in Montrose and we're gonna hop out and do a quick vehicle walk around and we'll show you what vehicles we're taking on this trip. All right, everyone, we are out here at the start of the Rim Rocker Trail. Um, we'll do a quick vehicle walk around. So first and foremost, we got Corey over here. He is a JL four-door. Um, he's on a three and a half inch lift and he's on 35s. Over here, we have just a bone stock Rubicon. This guy is on 33s and no lift. All right, and over here we have Tim and he is on a three and a half inch lift with 37s. So I'm out here with Tim and he's one of our main mappers up in Northern Colorado. Tim, you wanna just walk us through your setup really quickly. So we're getting uh, set up to do uh, remap the Rim Rocker Trail. And as I get started, I run a GPS unit on an iPhone on the dash. I also run a mini iPod and I'll have maps on this one. And this one, I usually run a lot of forest service maps. Um, it's a combination of making sure all the information is accurate and coordinated. And then I'll also use an iPad that I keep notes on. So as we go along the trail, things to pay note of, uh, information about waypoints, turns, that kind of stuff. Uh, this one is going to be a 160 mile trail. There'll be a lot of notes in this one. So keeping all this information organized by the time I get home, write it up, get it all put together and on the website will be a little bit of a challenge. What are you doing there, John? Oh, just soaking up all the lovely flowers, man. <laughs> These little yellow ones are everywhere. They're beautiful. Hey, Becky, could I get you to move like three feet to your right?
stuff. It is great stuff. Actually, it works out great because I do a lot of the uh, technical pieces with the, the mapping and the waypoints and the information. And John does great with all the photography. So it, the, the pair works out really good for mapping a trail and, and taking on down yeah. the information, putting it together. I can see that. It speeds up the process. It is. Uh, great weather today for trail riding, uh, for, for mapping. It's a little breezy. Uh, but oh my god, it's gorgeous. It's about 50 degrees or so. We're at about a little over 9,000 feet in elevation. Uh, trees up here have all started to bloom, so it's great for photography and video. Uh, good day to map. Are you filming me, filming Tim, filming you guys? Yeah, of course. Oh. <laughs> it's awesome. The making of making of a trail. The making of the making of the trail while you're making of the trail. All right, so we're at a point in the trail where uh, there's sort of a major waypoint. We leave one for Forest Service Road and go on to another. And there are some markers from the rimrock.org that tell you this is a turn. They're exceptionally hard to see and exceptionally hard to find. This is why the waypoints from Trails Off-Road are so important to follow. They give you direction so you don't get lost up here in the middle of nowhere. Follow the waypoints, we'll guide you the way. So we are probably about 20 miles into the Rim Rocker and it is just epic views at this point. Just snow-capped peaks, beautiful aspen trees, green lush meadows. Lots of wildflowers. Lots of wildflowers. So far this is an overlander's dream trail. Highly recommend this. things is important lunch that's what we're doing here we're gonna eat some lunch right on the side of the road So we just got onto the pavement after being up on the forest road. Um, it's way different climate down here. It's now very arid, very deserty, a lot of juniper bushes, a lot of pinyon pines. Um, the forest was absolutely beautiful though. That stretch of high, that stretch of forest road was top notch. So many flowers, so much lush vegetation, beautiful scenery all the way around. We're about 35 miles into the trail. We've just passed Nucla, Colorado. A lot of turns and we just left the pavement again here not too long ago. So far the trail has been a lot of graded road um, with a lot of uh, road base. The road here suddenly turns and it's going to be more trail-like. Uh, we are in BLM property at this point, still in Colorado, uh, but the trail is going to be more trail-like which is going to feel a little bit more like off-roading. Oftentimes the Tabawash is where the highest water crossing is on this trail. We're fairly early in the spring season, which means there could be a little bit of spring runoff uh, across the river. Uh, early reports are the river's a little high, so we don't know quite to what, what to expect, but uh, we'll figure it out when we get there.
All right, so we just went through the first water crossing on Rim Rocker, and it was not that deep. So we're in a stock Rubicon. We have 33 inch tires and it was a total piece of cake in this thing. Um, I would say any stock four wheel drive vehicle at this time of year will get through that creek, no questions asked. Um, super fun, we're just kind of rolling through the creek bed along the, the banks of the river, or I guess the banks of the creek. And uh, it's just super beautiful down here, aspen trees, lots of vegetation. So um, yeah, we're gonna keep going, going down the rim rock or getting some more water crossings in. out day number one we ended up finding a nice spot to camp in BLM land. We woke up in the morning made a quick cup of coffee and some breakfast and headed out to start day number two of mapping the rim rocker. This would end up being a full day of documenting all the amazing sights and sounds this trail has to offer. So that was our first little obstacle, it wasn't very hard, but I wanted to introduce to you the women of Trails Off-Road driving these trails so we can get some video footage. This is Marty. Hi Marty. Hello, good morning. We will cruise down, we will say hi to Anna. Good job Anna. Hi. Hi Anna. And last but not least, we have Becky driving the pumpkin. <laughs> hi Becky. Hi. Good job. these trails we really don't know what's up around the corner so sometimes we'll come up uh, on a really epic shot and we'll basically what we'll do is we'll sit here for a little bit and we'll just try to plan it out what would look the best where the sun is um, and so a lot of the time we're backing up vehicles we're setting up cameras a lot of trial and error and we we spend a lot of time just trying to make the perfect shot and sometimes we have to take two takes so a lot of backing up a lot of uh, talking amongst us what looks good what looks bad so it's uh there's a lot that goes into making these trail guides where do you think you're gonna set up oh, this is a great overlook so getting a view for the video showing people what the views they can get is it's yeah. really important the backdrop of the LaSalle's back here yeah. is really important there's a valley right below us with the San Juan River down in the valley yeah of the San Juans back here. Oh yeah. Um, I think I'm going to set up the camera here. And we'll drive past it coming uh, to it with that San Juan picture in the background. Beautiful. Okay. And we'll catch this as well. Cool. I'll probably set mine up right here and I'll get the little saddles in the background. Go in the other direction. Yeah, we'll okay. get double up on this one. All right. No, the sun's in this direction, so I got to think about that. We're probably just gonna have to back up here a little bit to make okay. this happen. Yeah, that's cool. All right, so it's important when you're taking shots and video that you want to uh, face them away from the direct sunlight. So the sun's over here right now, um, and so we're gonna set up a shot facing the cells over here and just get a quick drive-by shot. What I kind of try to strive for is to get the rule of thirds, so kind of get your subject of, of the most important part of the shot. Um, so I'm gonna shoot for this lower right-hand third and I'm gonna set my manual focus and drag it down. And so as the vehicles drive by, they'll be in focus.
Alright, so we're close to a town called Yerevan, and I think Yerevan is a uh, mixture of two words. I think it stands for uranium and vanadium, or vanadium. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce that. But anyways, a lot of these Colorado little mount, little mining towns um, have been really popular in the past, but are now pretty much totally abandoned, and all the mining operations have stopped. But along this trail in particular, there's been quite a few little mine shafts just trickled throughout the trail, so it's been kind of a really cool blast from the past. There's a lot of like, there's a lot of good history in these older mining town trails. So if that's what you're into, you're gonna find a lot of good history on this trail. Okay, we may have our first uh, obstacle coming up. We've got a rocky climb ahead. Uh, a past waypoint shows um, an obstacle and we'll check it out and see what it is. Copy. I like this section of this canyon. This is really gorgeous down here. Yeah, this is super beautiful. So we've been just going along this creek bed and um, it's just absolutely beautiful down in this creek bed. There's really high steep cliffs to our, to our right and to our left there's a really lush green uh, creek bed. Lots um, of natural rock formations as well. Yeah, yeah, this is an extremely scenic part of the trail. So we're coming, we're coming down into the back side of the Los Cells and it's just absolutely beautiful out here. Um, in front of us we have the Los Cells and over here is actually an old abandoned mining house. Um, I assume that old miners used to live in here. Um, and I mean, what a view, like we've got all these amazing rock formations, um, the mountains in the background. So, this is definitely a very cool place to, uh, to set up your home when you're out here mining uranium. So we've talked about it a little bit before in our other videos, but around the mining, um, around the mining house, there is some cryptobiotic crust. So this is the black crust you'll see on the ground. And this is actually a living organism. This is the stuff you do not want to step on because it'll take a very long time to regrow. Um, there are some theories that this is the origins of life on this planet. This is very special stuff. So whatever you do, just do not step on this because it will not regrow within our lifetime. Alright, so we just got on our second stretch of asphalt. That was definitely my favorite portion of the trail so far. 
the part from Montrose and Nucla was awesome. It had great wildflowers. It was just a graded road though, so not much variation in the road. It was very basic and a passenger car could do it without any issues. From Nucla to now, this section of the asphalt was awesome. There was a lot of in and out of creeks. Um, there was definitely a few obstacles that would require four low. Um, so th and there was a lot of cliff walls. Definitely a very cool place to go explore. Roger. This is absolutely beautiful up here. So one of the fun parts of Trails Off-Road is going to walk back to the cars after you drive by. It's a long ways. That's okay. It's the way we get our exercise program here at Trails Off-Road. Alright, wait. We gotta do one more drive-by. I'm sorry. These wild irises in the wind. We will, we're just gonna do one down here quickly. Um, we'll catch up to you guys. So we are, we have just gotten out of the LaSalle National Forest and my head has pretty much been on a swivel this entire stretch. The road is not really anything to write home about, but there are just wildflowers everywhere and it is stunning to see. I believe they're wild irises, they're purple flowers. They look very similar to irises you'd find, uh, just domestic irises, but they are totally wild. Uh, there's a good mixture of those with some yellow flowers. I think they're just dandelions. Uh, the combination of the two, the, the, uh, the pine trees, this Buckeye Reservoir area is just super special. It's highly recommend checking this area out.
All right, so we are getting closer and closer to Moab. We've kind of uh, dipped into this like very brushy area. And honestly, for about the last 45 minutes, we've just been kind of doing this, just playing bobblehead. Um, not much scenery down here. Uh, it's very, very tight. If you have a trailer, you can do it. I personally, I feel it would be very unenjoyable to bring a trailer through this part of the trail. Um, so up to this point, the trail has been absolutely spectacular. This particular part, um, which will mark all the waypoints on the website, to me, it's not really calling my name at all. And just a heads up for the camping in this part of the trail where it's very much uh, rocky and tight. Um, there is not a lot of camping in this particular location. Uh, there are no established fire pits and there's actually a lot of cows back here. So this is all ranching area. Um, if you're planning out this trip and you are planning on camping on the last like 20 miles of the trail, I would reconsider. The last place in the Rim Rocker that I personally would camp would probably be around the Buckeye Reservoir area. Um, after that, it's just very tight, rocky, and full of cows. All right, everyone, thanks for joining us on this adventure, and we'll see you next time out on the trails. Stay safe and uh, keep riding the trails.